The Rwanda Development Board has announced that Rwanda registered investments worth 1.3 billion US dollars in 2020, a decrease of 47.1% from the previous year. In 2019, RODB registered investments worth 2.46 billion US dollars. According to RDB, the decline in investments was attributed to COVID-19 pandemic that has affected the, the, global, rather, the global economy. Real estate and construction and the manufacturing accounted for 68% of all investments registered at 48% and 20% respectively. Other sectors that attracted significant investments include agriculture, ICT, energy, mining, financial services. A total of 24,703 jobs are expected to be created by the new investments with the manufacturing and construction sectors expected to create 8,661 and 6,372 new jobs respectively. The government aims to create 214,000 new jobs every year from investment and other employment sources. Foreign direct investments contributed 51% of the total investments registered in 2020, while joint ventures and local investments contributed 29% and 20% of investments, respectively. In comparison, uh, foreign direct investments represented 37% of the total investment registration in 2019, while the job ventures and local investments represented 44% and 19% respectively. Some of the largest investment projects registered in 2020 include one acre fund at 19, uh, rather 193 million US dollars, Phonix Plaza at 179 million US dollars, Duval Great Lakes Limited at 69 million US dollars, Sino Corporation Limited at 66 million US dollars, Jirinzu Developers at 41 million US dollars, Petrocom Building at 35 million US dollars, and B Box Africa Management Limited at 29 million US dollars. Other key investment projects registered during the year include a 12 million US dollar project by Noran Rwanda Limited to build East Africa's largest hub for entrepreneurship and innovation and a 4.45 million US dollars by Nexus Academy to set up a professional aviation training academy and to offer licensed courses in flight training, aircraft maintenance, ground handling and 26.2 million US dollars by Brewery Limited for the expansion of the brewery to meet the growing demand for their products in the country and for exports. Earlier today, we spoke to Zephanie Nyonguru, who is the Deputy CEO of the Rwanda Development Board, to expound more on these figures. So, um, Mr. Zephanie, we understand uh, investment in Rwanda was hit hard. Um, looking at the numbers that you just released, uh, there was a drop of about 47.1% uh, uh, compared to the previous year. Uh, which sectors do you think were hit hard in Rwanda in regards to the investment? Uh, thank you very much. If you look into the investment, as you actually mentioned, um, being in Rwanda, being in the region, being in the rest uh, um, parts of the world, the investments really went down. And uh, this was really, um, 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 mainly caused by the pandemic. Um, when you look into the numbers that you raised, as you actually mentioned, while in 2019 we registered in private investments or projects that were worth 2.4 billion USD, in 2020 we only registered projects worth 1.3 billion. Which sectors were hit the most? We are basically talking about sectors that were directly affected by the pandemic. Those are mainly services, financial services, education, transport, tourism, those are really some of the key sectors that, that were hit by the pandemic the most. And if you go into the numbers, those are really the sectors where we didn't uh, attract or record a lot of projects. Mm. We also saw that the uh, foreign direct investment contributed to 51% of the total investments registered uh, in 2020. How would you describe that, knowing that you know, the movement uh, throughout the entire year of 2020 was actually you know, not going on as expected? Uh, what does that mean to an investment um, you know, uh, environment in the country? Um, it's definitely a demonstration or, or a vote of confidence from uh, 
um, uh, international investors. It, it really shows that despite all of these issues that were caused by the pandemic, the investors uh, see our country as a, a conducive environment for private sector in investments. They see our country as a place where they can come, start their business, implement their activities, sell their products, uh, goods and services in Rwanda, expand and also generate positive returns. So it's really a vote of confidence, as I mentioned, but also um, it provides again um, other uh, positive and also uh, 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 externalities to, to the people of Rwanda, because all of these investments that we're talking about will create jobs. Moreover, if you're talking about all of these FDI coming to Rwanda, we're talking about foreign capital coming into our country. We're also talking about um, technology, new technologies coming into the market, and we're also talking about partnership with, uh, with Rwanda. So we do have investment in the three categories. We have those which are basically from foreigners, we have the ones from locals, and then we have a third category where we have those partnerships. So those are really uh, some of the uh, benefits that we see that, uh, that will be accruing to those foreign direct investments that you alluded to. All right. As we conclude this, I want to ask, um, what are some of the things that you're eyeing to in going into this year, 2021? Uh, in 2021, we, we, we shall keep working with private sector uh, um, uh, members to make sure that to help them to build resilience uh, um, uh, toward um, possible uh, shocks. You know, we still have this pandemic. It's kind of a, a crisis that is going on. But again, the key question is how do you build resilience in a way that if the pandemic continues or if we have another pandemic, um, we do have our company surviving from this. So that's, that's really intervention number one. Intervention number two is, uh, again, keep working on making sure that our environment still um, be top in terms of uh, attractiveness to the investors, be local, be foreign. And then number three, we're also providing, working with the other partners like the Ministry of Finance, working on other fiscal measures to make sure that uh, we provide some support, we provide some relief to members of the private sector who want to invest through provision of tax incentives. Currently, as we speak, we're implementing a program called Manufacture and Beauty Recover, where we're encouraging projects in construction, in agro-processing, in the light manufacturing, to be able not only to recapture domestic markets, but also to help us to recover uh, the overall economy. That's really some of the intervention that we are rolling out. That is Mr. Zephanie Nyonguru, who is the Deputy CEO of the Rwanda Development Board.